Phil and Ryan back here on Listen Up, your number one source for UConn women's basketball talk. Ryan, we're here to uh, on this uh, Wednesday morning, checking in with you on December the 7th, nice and early. Um, not a happy uh, last check-in like I wanted to uh, just after that news yesterday that we received. Um, but, hey, we're feeling blue this morning, but we have to raise our spirits and get ready for the future, right? We have to believe there's enough talent on this team to carry them until you said it, until the hope is to get everybody back fully healthy because we know March can get pretty um, pretty exciting, to say the least, right? I mean, fireworks, smoke and all, right? Cigars, <laughs> uh, Jack Daniels and Coca-Cola, everything, anything in it, Connor's Cheetos, anything and everything you want to think of uh, when March rolls around. So... But for now, our focus this morning goes on the Princeton uh, Tigers women's basketball team, Ryan, as we have a date set with Princeton and Connecticut Thursday, December 8th, as we will be right back here tomorrow night after the 7 o'clock matchup. And we will have our predictions for you and our MVP of the game. Um, unfortunately, I can't pick my usual MVP, Ryan, but we will have that at the end of this episode Ryan, what do you see in Princeton? Because I, I see that they're coming off a nice uh, victory here, 71-54 to 54 against Towson. Towson, Maryland, again, just less than an hour away from us. So Princeton coming off of actually a two-game winning streak. Uh, they lost to Texas on November the 27th. Breaking down the roster and this coaching staff, do they, do they, do they serve any threat? Do they serve any threat considering what UConn is going through all of a sudden? Yeah, well, Princeton's not too far away either kind of from New Jersey, and they actually have mm -hmm. quite a bit of Maryland players uh, Maryland players from Maryland on this team. So uh, Princeton comes to this matchup, 5-2 and two record. They actually ranked at 24 in the first AP poll, but they did lose to Villanova, who's a pretty good team coming from the Big East. We'll see them soon. Uh, and their second loss came from the hands – of the Texas Longhorns. So Princeton's lost to two very solid teams, and the Tigers' starting lineup consists of two forwards, 6'3 sophomore Paige Borden, and 6'1 junior Ellie Mitchell, who is from Chevy Chase, Maryland, but and also three guards, junior Caitlin Chen, senior Julia Cunningham, and senior Grace Stone. Uh, coming off Princeton's bench, usually just has one forward, sophomore Parker Hill, also a native from Bethesda. And the Tigers also have three guards coming off the bench. Junior Chet Nowicki, uh, third player from Maryland on this team. Freshman Madison St. Rose and senior Magan, uh, Maggie Colony. So this team doesn't really have a lot of size, certainly not as much as Notre Dame. Uh, I mean, I was going to say before the, uh, the AZ FUD injury, this game is not really going to be close, but... I'm uh, to uh, to be honest with you, I'm not really too sure what to think until I see this team without AZ Fudd. And we saw her in the second half without AZ Fudd versus Notre Dame, and it didn't look too good. So to be honest, I'm not really too too sure what to expect in this game. But um, I don't really think it, it's going to be a blowout like we saw versus Notre Dame. But uh, with the injury, I, I think this game might be pretty close. I, I don't know what a lot of people are thinking, but. I, I expect this game to be relatively close, but uh, we're still unsure what the news is for Dorka Yuha. Still not sure if she's able to go. And with, with us receiving the news yesterday of AZ Fudd's injury out three to six weeks. So, um, and, and UConn obviously comes in this game ranked at number six in the AP poll. And this is an interesting stat I saw, not to get off track, but UConn men are actually ranked fifth. UConn women ranked sixth. It's the first time since 2006 that the men have been ranked higher than the women. So I, I thought that was a pretty interesting stat. But um, I'm not really too sure what to expect from the UConn women uh, coming into this game with, with AZ Fudd being out. Yeah, you said it right. Although, um, yeah, I don't know what to expect in a lot of these games now because, again, they this team has yet to prove that they have any offensive answers without AZ Fudd, even when AZ Fudd is healthy. If she has a down night, and we discussed that not that long ago, I just – I and nobody – it seemed like nobody wanted to hear it. I just asked you that specific question the other night. I'm like, Ryan, 
what does this team do when AZ Fudd has an off night? Not, not considering – that's not considering uh, uh, discussing if she's injured like she is now. I was just saying, what's wrong? Can a player have a down night? You know, can, it's, it's, we, we want to say it's a team sport all the time. What, what's wrong with one, one player having a down night? You know, maybe, maybe they got some off court issues going on. Now, I'm not saying that's supposed to drag into the game, but man, look, someone said it right in another comment in another episode that we had. These young ladies are not robots, they're humans. Yeah, and they are. And, and certainly everybody has a down night. And we saw that that was pretty relevant during the, the Notre Dame game. So I think, you know, like I said yesterday, when we were discussing AZ Fudd's injury, I really think Caroline Ducharme is going to be the player that steps up. And I'd probably go with her as MVP. I know I'm picking that a little early, but I, I really just think and you have my you have my <laughs> pen in hand and paper, pen and paper getting ready already. huh? But I, I think she's really just going to be the, the answer. I, I'm not really sh- too sure what else to say. I think Caroline Ducharme, she had two really, really fantastic games, and she kind of had a letdown game that the last game there on Sunday. But she's really going to be the player that has to step up in terms of the offensive production. I think probably Lou Lopez Seneschal is probably going to take more shots uh, than what she already has. And she's really been shooting the ball really good. So hopefully she can continue scoring maybe 20, 30 points a night. Um, She's been doing really good lately. So, and I I think Aaliyah Edwards as well, she's been doing really good in the paint defensively, but she's definitely been more aggressive offensively, taking Mm. a lot more shots and getting rebounds. So I'd like to see her be more aggressive and and UConn can, I think, rely on Aaliyah to to definitely score the basketball. But until Dorka Juhas comes back, and I'm really hoping she can play Thursday because I think they're really going to get a boost. They're, they're going to lose a lot still without AZ Fudd, but this team can really use an, an offensive boost now by getting Dorka Juhas back. Um, I don't know if you remember uh, in the 2022 tournament. I'm actually checking out highlights now. I'm still listening to you as you're speaking to me. One of the observations I took away, um, from doing my little bit of research before coming on here is the, the tendency that Princeton has to take the ball away from you. And that kind of reminds me of how UConn plays tough physical defense, right? Princeton, if you remember, upset Kentucky 69 to 62 in the first round of the 2022 women's NCAA tournament um, when Abby Myers led the Tigers uh, in that game. So even though Abby Myers no longer on the squad, Uh, as I'm looking at this roster coming into this game, still a lot of weapons and give credit to Carla um, Berube, the head coach for Princeton. Um, But yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting because when I was watching the highlights of Princeton, of course that was a year ago in the tournament, but um, yeah, you're right. I mean, Princeton is no pushover again. I don't know if you remember when they upset Kentucky, but that was a wild game. Yeah, I do remember that. And even though Princeton did lose a couple of players, all these players that I just mentioned that are on the roster or, or are going to play in this game are all returning players. There's no transfers. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're definitely, they're definitely, uh, you know, they, they know what's going on in Princeton. And, I, and I'm, you know, I know they'll be ready for this game versus UConn. I think it's going to help that the UConn is home. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I honestly think it's going to be a pretty close game. I, I think. Uh, like you said, Princeton plays pretty tough defense, so I, I would expect them to be ready for the challenge. We know what to expect. That I mean, we we know that teams are are come they come prepared when they play UConn. They they know what to expect, um, and not many teams are able to execute their game plan. But when they are, we 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 can see what happens, and we we saw that on Sunday. So um, every team plays plays UConn really tough. So. Um, you know, it, it's it's definitely going to be interesting. I think a lot of questions are going to be answered after the game in terms of what we see as a whole entire unit out of the UConn team without AZ FUD. Well, a lot of questions are going to be answered right now, and they deserve answers because they came through very well again on that last episode, Ryan. They followed our lead, and they brought us – I tell you, our subs and everyone else really delivered as far as the comments section – and we appreciate it, and we all know that uh, that Ryan appreciates it as well because this, this is 
Uh, Ryan appreciates it as much as I do. This is Ryan's favorite part of the show. So, Ryan, we will get into some comments, uh, final predictions, and then we will head on out the door. Uh, Ryan, let's go with Lindsey Matthews. Uh, this was merely a chance for our team to learn. All the games they play are learning experiences and prepares them for the first Tuesday in April. That's all. Notre Dame played extremely well, but they didn't win the national championship today. I don't think they are a, a contender for the national championship. So, yes, the season is so young. But, you know, that's that's another – and, again, this is your part to handle. But I want to add on to that. Lindsey Matthews, thank you for commenting. But, again, I want to add on to that, Ryan, if I can, that comment and, and ask you – I, again, this is Gino we're talking about. I get it. What if, what if you just can't recover? What if you just can't recover? And you know exactly what I'm talking about, falling in a hole, and then you can't get back up there in time. Well, I think talking about learning experiences is it's definitely important and not talking about this season, but going back to last season again, mm -hmm. it, it was really important that we saw this UConn team kind of come together, and we've talked a lot about the team chemistry it's it's all about the team and we we really did see that last season and obviously we have a lot of returning players from that season so i think that that was really important to see and we have to keep that in mind about now we're having all these injury problems again that we hoping we were hoping uh weren't weren't going to transfer into the season but unfortunately that's uh <laughs> kind of the same scenario as it was last season so uh, we've seen the team come together before, and they they eventually figured it out last season. Even though they did lose a couple couple more games, and we're used to seeing UConn lose. But um, you know, even if they do drop a couple games while AZ Fudd and Dorka Uhas are still healing, uh, it's okay. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna be in the fight for the Big East tournament. Uh, they're still gonna make March Madness, so there's there's really no time to panic quite yet. Uh, it's still relatively early in the season, but uh, I disagree with the comment about Notre Dame being a contender. I think this is a really good Notre Dame team. They lost their only loss, a buzzer beater by Maryland uh, in the hands of Diamond Johnson. So I, I really think this Notre Dame team is going to be a contender, and it, it would be something if if UConn sees them again in March Madness because this Notre Dame team, I, I don't think they're going to go away that easily. Um, a new name and another new comment. Uh, Marcia Clark came through. We appreciate her commenting. Ryan, I thought this is very interesting. Notre Dame played it really well, and Olivia Miles is talented. No sour grapes here. They just played way better and shot the lights out. However, there's something very unprofessional and unsportsmanlike about Notre Dame, particularly Olivia Miles. I'm all for physical play, but there's a line and Miles seems to cross it a lot. Olivia Miles has a history of playing this way, and I wish the Notre Dame staff would stop enabling this behavior and get her help with composure. There's a difference between competitive and tough versus abusive. Thanks, Gino, for keeping your squad professional and tempered. Yeah, I, I do remember that uh nika mule i believe it was took a shot to in the from the hands of uh olivia miles i think it was a, as a elbow shot as she was olivia was driving to the lane and kind of the elbow went up and uh hit nika mule pretty hard got a technical foul so i i did i did see that i did recognize that during the game i think it happened another time as well but that is a, a very good point about UConn. We don't really think about that enough, how professional UConn really is. And ever since, I mean, that you can go back years and years to Gino being a part of this UConn team. And, and really every year you, you look at it, UConn always known for obviously winning, but being professional, being a uh, very sportsmanship type of team and, and just being all around very professional. So that that is something very uh, I think special that UConn brings to the table, but uh, you know, Olivia miles, she had a heck of a game and hats off to her. This is interesting. Uh, considering this episode that we're on, on this topic, Darian Owens, if AZ is out against Princeton, do you guys think we can win without her on Thursday? I know Princeton was ranked in the preseason polls, but have been underwhelming this season. Very good comment, considering what topic we're on. Yeah, it is. 
I think they can. I honestly think they can. I think they can beat Princeton. I'm not too sure about Maryland. We'll have to see when we get to that game in the last reach, uh, last check-in on Thursday in that game. But uh, I think against Princeton, they're they're a good team, uh, good defensive team. I expect it to be kind of another dogfight in the pain and with rebounds. But I think they can beat Princeton without AZ Fudd. It's it's going to be a learning experience, I think. And and Caroline, Nika, and even Lou, there's going to be a lot of players that need to step up. But I, I I'm really confident they can do it. Um, but it's it's going to be challenging. I think it's going to be a challenge. Jerome Danielson, here we go again, Ryan. These guys failed to mention no Dorka either. If she didn't score, she would have certainly gotten rebounds and post presence. Besides Edwards certainly would have made a difference well yeah, i 100 percent agree with that ryan but yeah. i'm not i'm not so sure uh I, I stand with you ryan on that i i believe that you didn't mention dorka because uh, she she didn't play did, did she play am i missing something no she's been out i believe it's been three ga- three or four games now i believe but like i said hopefully <laughs> You UConn's definitely going to need her now with with AZ Fudd being out, and I mm-hmm. think that's something. Although Aubrey Griffin, she can obviously shoot the ball, struggled on Sunday, like I already mentioned. But um, I think Aubrey, she doesn't bring the the type of um, I, I guess aggression that Dorka Uhas would bring. bring. Dorka is obviously a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. Um, so that's another thing with Dorka. She's obviously going to score when she comes back, but getting rebounds as well, because that's been something UConn's definitely struggled with, with Dorka Uha's out, getting rebounds, securing defensive rebounds. Um, you know, that's definitely something really important, and they, I think they struggled with that again against Notre Dame. This gets very deep, Ryan, very deep. Uh, a lot of emotions uh, coming Uh on these next couple of comments. And then again, we would get to predictions before we run out of time. Mike Curtis, UConn reign over women's basketball been over. It's all about South Carolina and standard. Now Uh, I'm sure he meant Stanford. Gino schedules one of the weakest schedules in college. So by the time March comes around the bracket, they will be so, uh, excuse me, the bracket, they in be so weak, young woman, don't dream of going to UConn like they used to. AZ heals fast, though. Her uh, Love her game. Next year is when she'll take that next real huge step mentally. Well, here we go again, Ryan. We're talking about, well, guess what? She's almost forced to take that next step mentally now because AZ is out three to six weeks. All right, continuing with the uh, comment, but UConn isn't a team they're built around one player needing to have an awesome game against a top 10 opponent. They always beat up on the 95% unranked teams they play. Dawn in South Carolina plays five to six top 10 teams within their first 10 games. Oh, mercy. Yeah, well, first of all, Gino doesn't make the schedule. uh, On contrary belief, he actually doesn't make the schedule. But, um, you know, I I would usually agree with that because the the whole narrative is always, you know, why does UConn play such a weak schedule? Why are they in the Big East? Um, well, they played three top 10 teams so far this year within their first uh, seven games. So that's something there. They beat two of them, lost in Notre Dame, of course. Um, but, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't think UConn's reign of women's college basketball is over quite yet. Um, you know, this is a Let's team. Let's talk about that. You know, you know, it's all about Paige Beckers, man. Come on. No disrespect, but I'm not cutting you off there, Ryan. Uh, not disrespecting any of these, any other, excuse me, any, uh, any other of these players on the roster or the coaching staff. But come on, man. Uh, Paige Beckers, huge Beckers fan. You are, uh, I am as well. And we all are, even if we don't want to admit it, right? I don't know why you don't want to admit it if you're a UConn fan. But, man, look, Paige Beckers, let's have that discussion Maybe, maybe, maybe once Paige Beckers is is gone from UConn. But look, this is just the beginning of something special. All right, so you're right. Continue. L- don't talk. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Don't talk about uh, UConn. Uh, uh, just they're done as a as a dominating team, especially when you had Paige Beckers on this team. Yeah, don't don't forget about Paige Paige Beckers returning next year because she'll be back. 
Um, but I, I mean, I, I don't even think UConn is their title hopes aren't just diminished from this one injury. Uh, AZ is going to come back. Dorka is going to come back. Hopefully the whole team can stay healthy um, during February, during March, that we can only hope we, we can't control injuries. But I, I think I'm very confident UConn can still win a title uh, with everybody healthy. Obviously, I don't think they can do it without Dorka, without AZ, really without anybody uh, on this team right now. But only having eight healthy players, <laughs> uh, I don't really think that's uh, possible to win a, a national championship. But when this team does get everybody healthy and they start rolling again, hopefully like we saw last year during the Big East tournament, everything started to really just click on offense yeah. and defense. So hopefully mm -hmm. we see that type of uh, production again right before March Madness and take that momentum all the way to the national championship. How about time for a couple more? Uh, because they really came through well. A lot of good comments. I, I really enjoyed reading every one of them, uh, taking something out of them. Uh, Gary Roundtree, thanks for coming through again. Being real, I'm a UConn fan. And tell it like it is. I don't hold back what I say. A super classic choke on ABC. The big girl down low having fun. Gino did a bad job of coaching a 6'5 girl sitting down watching. Should have been out there playing. DeBerry, what's up, Gino? DeBerry, go to another school program, please. You know, it, it's definitely a question. And I, I mean, I, I just don't know what to say anymore because. I honestly don't I don't see Amari getting any playing time. Um, I, I don't know what else to tell you guys. It's it's frustrating. It's it's disappointing because I think we all know what Amari DeBerry can bring to the table. We all know she's very talented, but unfortunately, it just doesn't work out for everybody at UConn. And it seems like that's that's the, the story around Amari DeBerry, that it's just not going to work out uh, unless another player would happen to get injured, of course, in terms of the forwards. But with Dorka Yuhas coming back, I, I just can't see Amari playing. I, I just can't see it happening. So um, it, it was definitely frustrating to see a UConn team get dominated in the paint once again. But I, I wouldn't call it a choke. Um, I, I don't really I, th I think Notre Dame's a legitimate team. I think they're going to be a contender for the whole entire year. So I wouldn't say it's a choke and, and AZ FUD obviously didn't play much during that game. So uh, we'll just have to see. Mr. Fahrenheit, I'm not a Husky fan, but I've been reading the comments and reading how some of the fans are downing the players. But my question is two of your players that's needed due to injury that's not playing uh, good that who is Aubrey G is coming off of back surgery and Caroline D is coming off of hip surgery. Like people, uh, you do know that it takes at least a year for your body to come back from those type of injuries to play a physical sport like basketball, just being sarcastic, but be realistic people. These are young women, not machines. Yeah, and that, that's a good point about Aubrey and Caroline both coming off of injuries, and, and also Amari uh, is as well. Of course, she played in the national championship game, but she's still coming off an injury, and UConn still didn't have Dorka or AZ in that game. That's two starters they were without for the whole entire, most most of the game. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we do have to remember they're not robots, they're not machines playing out there. They are other human beings that, unfortunately go through injuries and uh can can miss time as well and that's unfortunately what we've seen the whole entire season so far i've got time for one more because this sometimes the shortest of comments uh, gets you called up and just uh uh hyped up for days right for days but we love it and we all know that you love it maidstone plant farm he goes or she i'm sorry um uh, uh maidstone plant farm uh, please check the stats before you talk. UConn did win the second half. Look, man, before you go, Ryan, I understand this person is trying to get over the loss just like you and I. It's tough. It's not easy, okay? We get it. Um, I was pretty confused to see. Maybe you can uh, uh, tell me, Ryan. Please check the stats before you talk. 
UConn did win the second half. Without AZ Fudd, did AZ, pl- did AZ Fudd play in the second half, Ryan, first of all? Second of not, all, no. second of all, what was the final score? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> all, all I can say is I, I would encourage him to go back and, and watch the highlights or, or watch the second half again because uh, if UConn would have won the second half, they probably would have won the game. <laughs> but unfortunately, it was an all-out dom- uh pretty much demolition or, or domination, whatever you, whatever uh, adjective or, or verb you want to use. But uh, I mean, UConn won most of the third quarter. I, I would give you that. They cut it down to five, uh, five points, like I mentioned. But after that, after the timeout, um, UConn went back to not be, being able to do anything again. So, mm-hmm. uh, and Notre Dame just took control of the whole entire fourth quarter and it was really hard to watch uh especially during the fourth quarter just sitting there knowing that that UConn really couldn't do much of anything right outside of Lou Lopez hitting a couple buckets and it was it was really frustrating to watch uh just knowing that UConn was just they honestly they were just kind of waiting for the game to be over and, and for the final uh, score to to be announced and for the clock to hit all zeros because it just wasn't their day and it's, it certainly wasn't uh, a fourth quarter to remember. Two more, if your brain can handle two comments at one time, because I know this is early in the morning, Ryan, but we, we are definitely fired up now. I mean, these comments are serving us a great purpose. So we appreciate everybody coming through. Brian Wilkinson goes a classic choke, no outstanding game played by a single player on the team. They all played poorly. But they'll learn. Dorka might come back. FUD will miss three games. Just three, Ryan. Write this one off. And then Dan Wayman goes, AZ had zero plus one rebound. Caroline Ducharme played the same 13 minutes, scoring two points, had three rebounds and a steal. Plus, she wasn't fed the ball. Well, again, I I don't think it was a choke, but... Uh, of course, AZ, I mean, she didn't score because <laughs> she she didn't play the second half and she was pretty much hurt uh, for mostly the entire game besides the, the first quarter, I believe. But uh, it turns out AZ will miss about four to 12 games, it turns out. So that's that's uh, definitely disappointing news. But uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of Caroline, she obviously had a bad game, didn't play well much like the whole entire often uh the whole entire Yukon team I'd say outside of Lou Lopez Seneschal but uh you know like I've been saying I think Caroline is definitely going to be feed uh fed the ball a lot now I mean she has to be uh but I, I would like to see her be more aggressive because it seems like most of the shots she takes is uh three point shots so I would like to see her drive the ball more and, and get more foul shots I think that's something that Yukon they're they're obviously aggressive, but I just don't really see uh, where they take a lot of foul shots during the game. So uh, foul shots, getting fouled, and possibly getting the team in foul trouble is another important ac- aspect of the game that sometimes overlooks. So hopefully Caroline and really the whole entire UConn offense can be more aggressive. And uh, obviously it, it was just an all-around poor shooting night that we we haven't really seen uh, out of many UConn teams very often. That does it, Ryan. Final score predictions. Um, you have uh, as your MVP, Caroline Ducharme. I have um, Aubrey Griffin as my MVP in this one. I still, you know, I still believe in this team, man. I would still do. We're wearing the jackets. We're wearing the hats. We won't stop that, Ryan. We're here to discuss UConn women's basketball for the long run. And we appreciate all of you all that's with us on this long journey, this long ride that only seems like it gets more and more like a twisty, a roller coaster, huh? Because it just does not stop, especially this season, Ryan. Um, you know, I'll go a little bit closer of a ball game, man. I, I'm going to go. It's so hard to tell, man, because usually when you think about the UConn Huskies women's basketball team, you're like, man, they're going to be scoring. like They're coming out scoring 90, 100 points. Yeah. Ah, man, at this time I'm scratching my head, man, because they're relying on one player on offense. You know, that's how it seems nowadays. And now she's gone. She is gone for three to six weeks. Ryan, I'll take UConn 65 to 55. 
Yeah, well, like I said, Caroline Ducharme, I think will be the MVP. I, I think she's going to score the ball. Uh, hopefully they, they feed it to her. I think they're going to have to if they want to amp up the offensive production. But um, I'm going to go UConn. I think they do. They're able to win this game. They're able to bounce back. I'm I'm going to go 70 to 65. I think it's it's going to be a really close game. Uh, I'm going to go 70 65. Okay. And I just uh, uh, had a, a page on my phone uh, from yesterday. Um, and it said life without AZ. You know, AZ's fuzz injury adds a lengthy list of setbacks for UConn. Now, what does it mean for the Huskies' title hopes? Well, you already know what my prediction is, Ryan, when it comes to title hopes, and that prediction was made clearly all the way back when Beckers uh, was uh, announced that she's out for the season. So, Ryan, it's an interesting question, but uh, all of that can be put on hold, and hopefully, just hopefully, we can try to focus on this game uh, coming up tomorrow evening, it's at Gamble Pavilion, 7 o'clock, December the 8th, Ryan. Princeton Tigers and the number six Connecticut Huskies. Ryan, I will see you tomorrow evening for the game recap right here on Listen Up.